Hi, so this is going to be a create your own comic character workshop tutorial of sorts. Uh, we're going to create three character designs and I want you to create your own character designs as we do this. So let's say you've already got your story, maybe you even know how you, character, you want your character to look. I'm going to be giving you some ideas and some approaches, some methods that will help you to create a character that you enjoy drawing, that you're ready to draw over and over again and it will help people feel how you want them to feel when they see it. So it's about expressing your story and telling your story. So it's not a typical tutorial in, in the sense that you're going to be drawing exactly what I draw, but we're going to um, go through three different methods and you'll be able to go along with me creating your own character as we go. So first I'll introduce the three principles that we're going to use and then I'll go through each of them in more detail. We'll create our characters and then I'll do a little summary at the end. Okay, so here we go. Right, so the first method we're going to use is to create a recognisable silhouette. Um, I don't know if you've heard about this term before, but you'll notice characters, comic characters, cartoon characters, The Simpsons, etc. If you were to just see their outline, you would know who they are. That's what I mean by this. So quite often when I think about it, it's a good way of just thinking about the outline of the character. So let's say, for instance, a silhouette is really if all the detail is taken away from the inside of the character. So let's say you've got this shaded character here. Right now, that's quite a straightforward shape, could sort of be anyone. And what we start to do is we start to add details. So we add maybe hair, spiky hair, big ears. Uh, what else can we add? They've got shoulder pads, maybe these little shoulder pads that stick out here. Bigger shoes, things like this, which start to make that outline a little bit more distinctive. So we're going to go into that in a little bit more detail. We're going to create an outline and try and create a character that's got this recognizable silhouette. And the next approach that we're going to use is to experiment with creating, with drawing kind of expressive lines, lines that really say something about our character. This is all about how the character feels and how we want our audience to feel or how we want them to want our audience to perceive them. Um, so let's say our character is a very happy character. What I love to do is really try and get down an expression in one smooth line. Um, and so you start to use these lines to then influence the character's design. Let's say I've got this particularly happy character. I then see if I can use those features to create a design that embodies that personality, that emotion. Um, by accentuating those lines. So this will make a little bit more sense maybe when once we get into it, but the idea is just about creating these expressive lines that will hopefully help lead our design of the character. And the third principle that we're going to use is to create a character with a replicable form, with a, with a, with a kind of repeatable structure. Uh, we're, we're basically, we're going to have to keep drawing this character over and over again. So we want it to look the same. Um, quite often what we do is to create a kind of skeleton which we draw the character around and that allows us to create a character that we can draw again and again in the same way. So to do that, quite often we use very simple shapes like circles and squares and that allows us, by keeping it simple, it allows us to repeat the shapes and know exactly what it is that we're meant to be drawing and you'll see that I also start to use kind of structural lines on the face so that we know roughly where the eyes are going to go, uh, where the mouth is going to go and it helps us to create a character that looks at least roughly the same each time. So those are the three approaches that we're going to use. Let's get stuck into it and create our characters. Okay, so we're going to start off by trying to create a character by thinking about the silhouette. Now, a great way to do this is to just draw a sort of a squiggle on the page. 
Um, now, obviously, that looks like nothing. Uh, but that's kind of the point. What's good about this is that if we were to draw a person or a thing, we'd make it look a certain way. we draw something that looks like other thing. We're trying to create a shape that's more distinctive, that's a little bit more unique. So this just frees us up and it allows us to think about shapes that maybe we haven't seen before, uh, an outline that we haven't seen before. And you'll see now how easy it is to turn this, this squiggle, which looks like nothing, into a character. So just look at, do something similar on the page in front of you. Just draw a squiggle. Don't try and copy this squiggle necessarily. Um, and just place anywhere in the shape, somewhere that maybe feels appropriate, a face. And <laughs> already you start to see that, well, maybe these parts of it could be ears. Um, this is its body. Maybe this is a foot or something. I don't quite know what this shape is yet, but let's start adding details within the shape. Let's say if that is the, the face, just give it a collar there and turn that into another ear, some ears there. So this allows us to start thinking of it in a different way. Um, maybe this is this is a little arm. Maybe there's another little arm out here. Which makes me think of this part as like a fin, actually. So it's not a, f a foot, it's a fin. So by adding details to the inside, you start to see... Uh, you start to create maybe like a, a more original character, something that you wouldn't have thought about if you just sat down and and drawn something that you know what it looks like beforehand. Um, drawing for me a lot of the time is, is, isn't is about drawing what you think you know. Obviously, that can come into it. But also, it's about taking things one step at a time, looking at what you're drawing, um, absorbing that and, and thinking about what you want to see next because that's what maybe a viewer will want to see. Okay, so the other thing about the, these these three techniques that I'm going to show you, so now we're sort of focusing and thinking about the silhouette, but they, there was going to be crossover between them. So um, later I'll talk a little bit more about the kind of structuring your character and creating this repeatable shape. But what I'm going to start to do now is see how I can turn this into a character that I can draw again. So we've got the face area here. So yeah, that's like a circle. We've got the fin here, we've got tiny little arms, and I'm going to draw some kind of structural lines here to go to show where the face goes. And let's put the ears on the top here. So maybe it's only got ears on one side of its head. So it's an odd character. I mean, what I like to do now is also start asking questions. Who is this character? Why Why do they have ears and a fin? <laughs> why are they both fish and mammal somehow? Um, let's play on that a little bit more. Let's add a few more details to the inside. Maybe give it a nose and whiskers. Now, you'll see here, by adding those whiskers, I'm adding a little bit more detail to this outline, and that all helps. That all helps to make this outline shape a little bit more distinctive. Um, and then the things that you place inside the shape are mostly kind of just texture. Do I want these to be fins or do I want them to be hands? Let's give them a thumb. Let's give them a thumb. And that adds a little bit more detail. And that makes this character a little bit more expressive as well. As well. It allows us to do a, little bit, a few more things with them. Okay, so once you've started to create a shape like that, you start creating ideas, then you can just play with it a little bit more. Um, what I'm going to do now is turn down the opacity on this and try drawing over it and just seeing how that looks. And give them teeth because it's feeling sort of bunny-ish. Got the whiskers there. So 
So that's one way of coming up with a very unique, distinctive character. What we're going to look at now is how we can come up with a character concept using expressive lines. Because when we're drawing this character in the comic, we're going to be able to want to ex express ourselves through this character. And one of the things that I love to see in comics is when you can almost feel how the, the person drawing the comic has drawn it and how they felt. So by getting lines down in kind of one simple motion, you see, like this, is a great way of expressing certain emotions. Um, it, that kind of flow, a, a, a person will, will look at that and they'll feel, they'll sort of almost feel how, how the person drew it. So getting one smooth line and doing smooth lines as opposed to kind of bitty lines, I think is, is really important. Um, so let's see how we can start thinking about a particular emotion and transform that into these sort of expressive lines. So let's just think about a very, a, a very happy character. So I'm going to do one big, big smile like that. And another just like that. So this starting to meant to look like sort of laughing. I'm going to put some teeth in here. And we're just everything here is about being motivated by that expression. Because, um, for instance, sometimes you might have a character who you know is going to be very funny, very happy. Sometimes you might have a character that's going to be very sad or very angry all the time. So starting with um, expressing yourself and expressing those emotions in the character is a great way to start off their design. So if I were to put the eyes, for instance, next to that line, it really exaggerates it because you can see that now this this smile line comes up above the eyes which makes it feel even more exaggerated and what if i were to eyebrows are great and i always think i think eyebrows especially especially you always want to do in kind of one motion uh eyebrows are so expressive and they tell so much about the character and how they're feeling um so i want to use this fact i sort of want to accentuate this i'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller there so that this, these lines stand out the most. Um, I'm going to accentuate this, these lines a little bit by actually saying that the face sort of ends here, like that. Um, maybe we just give them a little nose. And these lines under the eyes sort of make them just look a little bit tired now. I'll just put a, just put a tongue in there. You can see as well how um, I wanted the tongue to also be expressive, so you're kind of just doing it sort of, you've got this movement, these strong movement lines in the tongue there. Um, and let's, let's exaggerate this, this shape a little bit more as well. Maybe they've got hair on the top here, and some ears there. Now, you can see, for instance, like the previous lesson that we've just done, um, about the this, it, this silhouette, this shape. So what we're creating here is we've sort of created this shape that's like a funnel at the top uh, with hair on the top here. So this this is a this is the shape of a face which I haven't necessarily seen much before. Like it, it, it it's a great way of breaking out of the typical mold of where you'll do a face and it will look a little bit like an oval, uh, and then you'll have hairline and ears and like that kind of shape we've seen a lot before but this one is is brand new so you can see how using these expressive lines can help to motivate a new design for a character um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear these bits off the page Let's bring this a little bit more centrally. And let's have a think about their body and how we can use expressive lines in their body. Now, one thing that I find always really helps, a great way to start a character when you're drawing the full body, uh, I'm gonna switch the color so that it's more, it's a slightly lighter blue. Um, so this is gonna be a kind of underlayer. 
when you're drawing a character in their full body, a great way for me that I, I like to start is to is to just get one expressive line that goes through their whole body. Uh, and that just helps to give us a, a bit of a structure and a form to build around, which I'll talk more about um, we'll talk more about next. Now we know that their face is this sort of semicircle with a rectangle on top. You can see how developing that sort of unique shape makes this instantly recognizable for us. They're happy. So we've got their happy expression here. And how else can we we use so that's this is almost like they're leaning back and they maybe they've got their arms just like wide open, ready they've just seen someone that they haven't seen for a while and they're ready to give them a hug. Um, and you see with the hands again. I'm not. I don't want to necessarily put a lot of detail into the hands. I get, I'm using sort of straight lines, smooth lines, because these lines are there. As much as they are there to represent the hands, they're also there to represent that movement, that expression, uh, and that's what's really important. I'm going to put a ball here, and let's imagine sort of exaggerating that that angle here, that curve, give them big feet like that, their legs are sort of split apart maybe, maybe they've got high trousers, braces, and now again we're trying to create that sort of recognisable silhouette by, by exaggerating some of these shapes, um, don't need a lot of detail in the arms necessarily, and you see there how we feel that emotion of this character that's excited to see someone, they're leaning back, arms out, ready to greet someone. And that's, that's, that's a moment in a story there, and that's exactly what we're trying to create. So you, what I've started to do here is also talk a bit about that form, that structure that we build these characters around. Um, so let's look at that in a little bit more detail. This is what I mentioned earlier as sort of the replicable form, uh, repeatable structure. What you're going to kind of remember when you're creating your comic character is that you're going to draw this character over and over again. Uh, you want to be able to enjoy yourself as you draw them, which is why the expressive line, like those lines are fun to draw. Um, you want to be able to express yourself and do that, but you also want to make sure that it's recognizable over and over again. So it, it's good to start to give yourself and think about that internal structure. You saw I did it earlier with that fish bunny thing. By turning it into a circle, by turning it into a, by turning it into a circle, and then this sort of oval triangle. Um, I did it again with the previous character that you saw, happy character, by having a semicircle and a rectangle. Now, th these are very simple shapes that we're able to remember. And what I do as well in this instance is often I'll, I'll give structural lines in the middle. So you'll have a line through the center of the face uh, and maybe another line which offers information on where the eyes are going to go. And not only does this help us to repeat the shape, but it also helps to add expression as well. You see the slight curves. Maybe they add volume. So if you see the sphere here, if I was to do that line at a curve like that, what we're trying to imagine is we're trying to imagine that that is a sphere uh, rather than just a flat circle. So the curves can also imply a degree of volume. But let's let's say we start off, let's start off with just those shapes. Let's start off with just, let's say, a kind of rectangle. Now I've drawn this rectangle slightly bigger at the top that wasn't necessarily intentional, but let's go with it. Um, I'm going to put a line down the middle to give us a sense of symmetry. Now you see the line is slightly over to the left, so I'm going to assume that maybe looking over slightly to, to the left-hand side. Um, and I'm going to draw this line. Actually, rather than going dead center, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Maybe put the line just up the top here. So that is where the eyes are going to go. Um, and again, that's all about that sort of recognizable silhouette or that recognizable shape because it's a bit more distinctive. It's a little bit different to what we've seen before. Now, with the eyes at the top here, I'm going to 
make them look a little bit a little bit tired. And actually, what's cool is that line across looks like a mouth now. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that and make them look sort of grumpy. Uh, this person is not impressed. I'm going to now thicken up my brush. So let's say maybe you get a thicker pen and make really thick eyebrows. I've done that with a thicker brush because again, I don't I don't necessarily want to be um, doing that with lots of different strokes. I want to do it with like one stroke because it feels more expressive. Now, I'm going to add another shape down here. So that top tape shape is sort of a rectangle. I'll make this a sort of semi-circle. And I'm then just going to use lines and very simple shapes here. So the other great thing about comics is you can do it just with stick men, really. So a lot of the time, a lot of what I use is just sort of stick men shapes uh, to, to figure out how I'm going to tell the story. Um, and these arms, for instance, are very just stick men, like they don't need to be more than that. But you can see how I've got a structure there that I can build around and I can start to draw that again. So, so let's maybe add a few more details to the outside. Should we add some ears? Or maybe this is a robot. Let's add some square ears and an antenna of sorts. Uh, if it's a robot, what's happening in this space? It would be quite nice to add a few a few details here. Maybe they have a kind of a grill here that looks a little bit like a beard. It's a kind of chin. So these details, it's just a kind of way of adding a little bit of texture, makes the character a little bit more distinctive. Um, I'm going to you can see how we build around this shape. I'm going to add some sort of shoulders here. So this character is going to have these sort of shoulder pads. Maybe they've got a square in the middle here. And these are going to be the arms. Right, so what's important here is can we draw that character again? Well, yes, we can. We're going to try. It might not look exactly the same. Um, you would get a lot of practice once you started. Once you created your comic character, you get a lot of practice about drawing them. Um, this time, I'm going to put their arms out. So, I've used just one line to represent the arm. If I were to add a second line, that just adds a little bit of thickness, a little bit of body, and let's say they're these sort of robot metal arms that have these lines on that that's how they bend and you got these feet this door component and um, what do we say we said sort of shoulders here I quite like them just a circle there actually um, not entirely sure what they do yet or why they're there but I quite like them um, do I like this shape and I'm not sure I like that beard shape but the overall Shape. So another way to do the eyebrows, actually, if you haven't got a thick pen, you can do is draw them as circles. You see, again, I'm doing it in one motion, and then you can colour it in like that. But still, that outer line is important, and you can, it still gets that expression element. Let's try and make this we make this robot look a little bit happier now. I'm gonna have a zigzag on the top. So you can see that this is the same character, even though there are some slight differences, some slight changes. By using just very simple um, set shapes, which we build the character around, they immediately become recognizable. Now, I don't even know if we need these details here, because actually I quite like the simplicity of that shape. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So you, you, you've seen now, we kind of combine these elements of creating this uh, replicable form, this sort of body structure out of simple shapes, how we use expressive lines to create the character and how we use uh, a, a recognizable silhouette. So we want to create characters that are a little bit more distinctive. Um, but one final thing that I want to say uh, uh, in addition to all of these is how, 
how um, important just the simplicity is and how you don't necessarily need to draw that well or even draw that much. You can do it, you can make a comic just with stickmen. That is really all you need to make, to tell a story. So go ahead, tell your story, create your character, and, um, and let me know how you get on. I'd love to see some examples. I don't know if you follow along with me and copy my drawings or whether you've created your own, but it'd be really interesting to, to find out. You can contact me at Andy Hammond. Art on I'm on Instagram. Uh, don't know if you can read that. That's my handwriting. Enjoy. Okay, thank you for watching. All right, so there we have it. We've got our three characters. Hopefully, introduce you to a few design principles which you can go away use and create your own characters with. Maybe you've created your own characters or got come up with some ideas as you've gone along today. Um, really, I want you to. Find what characters that you like drawing that entertain you, entertain your audience, uh, and help you, help you to tell your story. So you can mix and, mix and match some of the ideas that we had today, and um, let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear. I'd love to see your drawings if you can. Just send them to me at, at Andy Hammond Art. Um, tag me. Uh, let me know how how it goes. And if this has been any help at all, then please do get in touch.